Hey folks, Happy New Year! It's the first video of 2024. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. Thank you for supporting this channel and for being here. So this video is, um, I'm going to be answering a question that was, uh, it came up as a prompt on the platform Tonebase. Um, if you have never heard of Tonebase, I strongly recommend you check it out. There is a fantastic violin community there and some incredible courses by some of the best violinists alive today. And the question was, it came up, I think a little bit before New Year or right on New Year, I don't remember. It was, uh, what motivates you to practice? So I'm going to be answering that in this video. So everything I say here, it's basically my opinion and my views on motivation now as part of my journey where I am now in January 2024. And to be honest, I kind of have a problem with the word motivation. <laughs> Because, first of all, I know I cannot rely on it. It's not going to happen. I cannot rely on motivation, especially as a professional violinist. So the truth is that the feeling, the good feeling when you're motivated, it usually follows action most of the time and not the other way around. It's rarely the other way around. And this is a concept that I learned uh, from the growth equation. If anybody has ever heard of the growth equation, check out their podcast. Uh, it's called Farewell. They talk a lot about the pursuit of well-being and excellence and uh, getting to the big state of performance and other things about mastery. Um, the idea is that um, you shouldn't wait until you feel good to get going, but you should get going to give yourself a chance of feeling good. And this is a concept that I strongly think is true. It's definitely true for myself. I mean, how many days out of a month do you hop out of bed and you're so excited to practice, that's all you want to do, you just can't wait. To be honest, you know, for me, no. I mean, there will be days where I want to practice and there will be days when I don't, just like anybody else. Uh, so what it takes to show up, it has, there's a big, there's a lot of nuance to this whole motivation thing, I think. Um, and it's not just, it's not like a black and white. Um, so that's why I don't really have, I don't really use the word motivation for myself. But uh, here's what I learned about it. Of course, many of us know, are familiar with um, the terms intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Um, intrinsic, the kind that comes from within, and extrinsic, that is um, caused by outside events in your life or other things that um, give you a situation, give me a reason to practice. So I noticed, you know, I've read a lot of books on um, personal growth and whatnot. And there are so many talks about, you know, bashing extrinsic motivation and you have to really focus on, you know, what's, what's intrinsic, what you really want. And I think there is, I have a little bit of a problem with that because you kind of need a little bit of both, I think. Um, in reality, that's how it's going to be. So when it comes to violin practice, um, number one, I realized that um, the majority of people um, not everybody, but I would say the vast majority are more likely to show up for other people rather than for themselves. And this is especially true, I think, when it comes to things like New Year's resolutions. So I know for myself that uh, it's important to be there for my community, for my students, for my colleagues, for the larger ensemble, whatever my role may be as a musician whether I am a teacher or performing with an orchestra, I know what my duty is with the musical contribution in a particular situation. This is more extrinsic motivation, but I think my role as a professional violinist, this is very important, right? So that's just the base, bare minimum, right? That's the bare minimum for me. This is Part of why I must always continue to practice my basics, my fundamentals, um, at least to maintain my abilities, if not improve how I play. Um, so that's just the bottom line for me here. <laughs> um, but of course, that's not the only thing. So let's go back a few years to March 2020, when the pandemic uh, closed um, 
all performance opportunities for musicians, not counting live streams online. I'm talking about you know live performances in concert halls around the world. What did a lot of musicians do to keep themselves motivated at this time? So there was, I think, there were many things. And uh, for myself, um, number one was to challenge myself um, out of curiosity to see what I'm capable of, especially when I had. Uh, no responsibility of going out commuting to play any concerts for almost a year, actually. No, I think my, yeah, almost a year. I don't remember exactly when the first one was uh, coming out of the pandemic. Um, number two, for my mental health, uh, especially and even now, especially when the world is falling apart and, uh, you know, we have at least two big wars happening right now in the world so music for many people is a great way to escape reality so to speak for others it's as uh, opposite they music music is a medium to express um, what's happening in the world or whether it's your inner world or or otherwise the whole escape thing gets tricky especially when music is also kind of what you do for a living but that's another video, that will be for another video. Um, next thing, um, back to the pandemic, why we kept practicing, uh, to explore new repertoire. There's so much new repertoire out there, especially in the 21st century. It's incredible uh, how much repertoire for different instruments is growing, especially, I remember during the pandemic, there was more music written for solo violin unaccompanied than any other time I remember. Um, also, to rediscover old repertoire and see it through a different lens. And this is something that I love doing, actually. Uh, I love going back to repertoire that I have studied. Um, and several years later, let's say five years later, three years later, I know I play differently. And I know maybe I will interpret the music differently and perhaps I will play with a different sound. Um, so I love seeing how a piece evolves um, and this goes hand in hand with the next thing. One thing that practicing does to me, it helps me improve my relationship with myself. And I think this is something that's so important for all musicians out there. When we play music, part of it is we have to make ourselves vulnerable when we express ourselves musically and our relationship with ourselves is uh, also going to impact how we perform and it's going to uh, impact how we show up for ourselves. This is something I mentioned in the beginning, you know, people who will show up for themselves versus others. There is a whole conversation to be had separately on that topic. Also, you know, extrinsic motivation, I wouldn't bash it the way many people do on the internet. I think it's great to have a community. I think it's so important and this is something that helped me I think more than I realized. Even before the pandemic, um, for example, when Hilary Hahn introduced the uh, 100 days of practice challenge on Instagram, this is something that's still popular on Instagram now and I think it's helping a lot of musicians, especially classical musicians, to share their progress and not just a tiny little highlight from their life. And I think uh, embracing sharing your path, it makes it more interesting. And also it helps uh, for us not to feel so alone. A lot of times, you know, we practice in a room all by ourselves. So having a community, I think, is very powerful. And it gives you a sense of belonging when otherwise it's especially also culturally in the field of classical music it's very easy to not feel like you belong it's easy to feel like you're an outsider even as a violinist you know there are, there are thousands of violinists this this is similar to living in new york city new york city is has a 8 to 10 million residents now but it's also one of the loneliest cities on the planet and I feel like being a violinist sometimes it can feel a little bit the same way there are so many violinists out there but it can get a little lonely sometimes so having that online community I think is amazing and that's one of the reasons I love tone bass um, and I learn something from there all the time and it's just great to interact with others and learn from each other and of course finally uh, 
again, going back to uh, my duties um, in my job as a professional violinist, I know that once the busy season begins, like around March, when there will be more concerts and maybe more some auditions, I know that that's when I'm going to need to practice more. I'll have to, actually, I won't have as much time to practice, but I'll have a lot more music to practice. So knowing that, uh, thinking ahead, I know that right now in January, when there aren't as many concerts, this is the time to get those etudes out, really uh, get myself in shape as much as possible. Um, so having the whole season laid out in my head um, really helps me to keep showing up. And I know that once the busy orchestra season resumes, I will be that much more prepared. Um, so that's my spiel on motivation for January 2024. I wonder how that's going to change in a couple of years. I'm going to leave this video on YouTube and come back to it in a couple of years. Um, but what about you? Let me know what motivates you to practice. Leave that down in the comment section below. And as always, happy practicing.